Welcome to Casual BCH. In this episode, Cheapy and I continue talking about Bitcoin Cash, Cash Tokens, Games, and AI. What about Cash Tokens? That is kind of what you're focusing on. Not that there's a lot going right now, but it's growing. Yeah, I think it's it's important to remember that, you know, Cash Tokens uh, started or was enabled, I should say. Uh, in May, and you know, cash tokens is just technology technology that you can build stuff on, right? It's like uh, it's like building a highway, you know, without without uh, cars. It's it's uh, nice to have, but uh, not necessarily uh, useful, yeah. amazing by itself. Well, it's still it's useful, you know. You can I don't know sunbathe on it if you want to, but uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> not not uh, perhaps the most optimal use of it. Um, and so it really depends on on whatever projects get built uh, upon it. You know, Cash Tokens opens up so many options and possibilities on BCH uh, that don't exist on other chains and don't face the scaling issues that Ethereum and other EVM chains do exist. Because, you know, if you, if you look at anything on Ethereum right now, they have, you know, the same problem with fees. And if, if, if you're building your business on, on a blockchain, you have to be somewhat certain that the costs of it are going to be within a certain range. You know, that's just basic business, right? So if, Today, it costs me a dollar to do my business, but next week it costs me $50. And then the week after that, it costs me two cents. It's very difficult to run a business. And with BCH, you don't have that problem because fees are always going to be reasonable or or barely even noticeable. And so people who want to develop projects on BCH using cash tokens will benefit from that as well. And the, the great thing about cash tokens, of course, is they're they're minor validated. They're they're part of the the main chain. It's not some secondary thing. And so, of course, there are projects being built, as with with any blockchain. You know, I, somewhat simple stuff gets done first, like NFTs, right? It's it's you know basically a string that attaches to a picture uh, that's unique, uh, which is not the most groundbreaking of, of things, but is still cool to have. And of course, ties into other things like games, etc. in the future. So of course, those sorts of things get, get launched first. DEXs follow soon after. And then after that, you get into far more complex things like prediction markets. And that's that's what I'm really looking forward to the most Someone is 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 working on a, a prediction market. Uh, I don't know when beta will be out or when it will be released. Uh, but prediction markets are huge. It's it you know you can you bet on the outcome of anything uh, you can imagine. Who will be the next president of of Paraguay? Will will the next Marvel movie make more than a billion dollars? You know, you can make prediction markets for anything. And it's really interesting to see the sorts of things that people are are willing to to bet money on, right? I bet it's going to be sunny tomorrow. <laughs> like, okay, what are the odds? <laughs> and it's, on the one hand, it, you know, it, it sort of scratches the itch of, of people who are interested in gambling. But on the other side, you know, there's a lot more to it than just a game of chance, right? If you, if you have understanding about a certain topic, then you can literally put your money where your mouth is. You know, this is going to be the outcome of whatever event that I have knowledge about. And I'm willing to put my money on the line to say that that's true. Yeah. It's just, uh, you know, it's going to open up a whole new, whole new world whole new world the video just got taken down because I, <laughs> I said that those, those yeah, about, yeah not, so I... no ladies first <laughs> oh i thank you um <laughs> the prediction mark stuff is cool Age before it, beauty. yeah oh okay <laughs> <laughs> i'm not huge on the prediction market stuff myself mostly because i'm not a gambler in any sense really so it's definitely cool and it's going to enable stuff, but I'm way more about like the utility for games. And since I was just looking at it last night, actually, uh, some of the tutorial contracts and stuff after getting working, it's like, oh, you could make a new flip starter with this really easy from what I understand yep. and yep. able to. So flip starter for non BCH people or people I don't know is like a, a crowdfunding platform. I think like Kickstarter, but there's no trust involved and you can basically raise money for projects without having to 
uh, set up an account or you could evolve credit cards, etc., etc. But currently, the problem with Flipstarter is that it's a it's an all or nothing. If you raise, if you're asking for ten thousand dollars and in BCH, and you succeed, you get it all, and you get it all right away, and it's gone. And a lot of people, you know, a lot of past projects have just rugged, taken it, ran away, um, or not delivered what they were supposed to, or whatever. But yeah, cash tokens, you should be able to do something like that quite simply, where you you succeed in funding, but maybe you're only allowed to take out X amount every month, like a paycheck. And you could probably develop some stuff into it where it's like, oh, you can actually uh, revoke uh, the remaining funds if the people that funded it don't like the direction you're going uh, because you're not delivering anymore, for example. So that's something I'm currently starting to look at and think about because I need oh, to pick an yeah. initial project to try and do some testing on. So. <laughs> That would be huge. Yeah, you. I don't know if you've had any conversations with uh, the GP guys about that, but uh, I, I'm I'm not a real idea. coder, man. <laughs> I don't consider myself yeah, a real but... coder, so I can I can conceptually see this, but I know that there's stuff I'm missing, so I don't know how far I can get it across the line. So I'm still in that initial stage of like, what can I do? Sure, but but uh, you know they know they know how Flipstarter works intimately. So I'm sure they'd be happy to help you, you know, with any questions you have, especially if you're going to be uh, increasing the the utility of of Flipstarter. I mean, you don't necessarily have to keep the same name. You could create some new, you know, like Mike Hearn's original Lighthouse project. You could call it Light Coin <laughs> or something. <Ooh. laughs> but L L I G H T, right? That's oh, Litecoin. Light coin. Yes, yes. Yeah, yeah, I might ruffle different. a little feathers. <laughs> yeah, a little bit. Oh, the B cashers are doing it again. Yeah, uh, I, I agree. I think you know, to be totally honest, the thing I want, which I've been dreaming about, is a game that involves NFTs that are transferable, transferable between games, and that was something that existed on BTC, which I didn't mention before, but. Uh, yeah, there, there, there was several games made off on uh, uh, using Indie Square, which had colored coins, which were of course on BTC at the time. I think I still own those NFTs if they're even possible to move or whatever. But uh, you know, it was great. I bought an NFT for this one game, and in the one game, it gave me a special power up. And then a different developer created a different game that used the same underlying technology and accepted the the nfts for other games that gave power-ups in their game and it was fantastic it's it's the dream right you you mm -hmm. work hard to get rewarded something and then that carries on into other games and it, you know maybe in this game it gives you an extra life in an, another game it gives you a house and in, in the game that 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 nft is actually created for it gives you the ultimate whatever and absolutely uh, would love for gaming to incorporate these sorts of things but that's a you know i i think of that as down the road i don't think of that as as something that's going to pop up like really soon whereas i think a prediction market is much simpler uh, than an entire ecosystem of, of of gaming nfts and so i think while that's what i want in the end i think uh, i'm i'm you know, excited about prediction markets because I think they're just around the corner. Just, just to clarify, okay. uh, I, I think more about the gaming thing is sort of like a holy grail kind of thing. But uh, you know, again, that's uh, a bit down the road, perhaps. <clears throat> I, I'm, I'm going to disagree with you on this one. I think it's okay. the opposite way. I, I think the gaming stuff is like right around the corner and could pop up at any moment, and the prediction market stuff is going to happen. But it's only the people with a lot of money that are going to do it so the usefulness is not going to be as you know holy grail you'll be able to figure out everything based off of it because like i'm not a gambler i wouldn't use prediction markets personally because i don't want to lose everything i have <laughs> <laughs> so you don't have to put all of your money into it. you can put <laughs> you can put you one know, sat into it it's not a, it's not a big i i've never uh, i've never really gambled but i don't want to take that risk of maybe i'm have to go some gamblers anonymous thing you know <laughs> I see, I see. but no it's just not for me i just i, I don't really see yep. a point in it personally but the gaming side of it uh, and well not even me but like most people most average people don't have money to throw away on betting so that's where i kind of like prediction markets good but I don't see it as like a 
the entire world is going to change from it in terms of average people because I just I don't really see all the people using it if they're having to risk their value. Fair enough. Um, yeah. Yep. Uh, I I you know I agree with you. I think gaming is is much more uh, important, and I think it has a much uh, greater appeal to to most people. Uh, but a big caveat there is I think you know how many how many Steam games do we have that we don't play, right? the crux of nfts and gaming etc is good games uh games that you want to play that aren't just some grindy thing because you know like uh axie infinity was that what it was called you know you just grind away and you you rent nfts from other people and to get more love potion or whatever it was called uh yeah. it didn't seem like a fun game it just seemed like you know world of warcraft gold grinding I think uh, gaming is going to really depend on good games, <laughs> which Pretty is, much. I, again, I think, yeah, I think harder, harder to do. Uh, you know, I don't think there's any blockchain games I've played so far that have been enjoyable and, and made me want to come back. Have you played uh, Gods Unchained? No, no. I, I looked at it a little bit, but I'm not, that's one of those like card fighter games, right? Yeah. So it's like a Magic the Gathering style or Hearthstone or whatever. Yeah. So that, that's kind of my point, though, is that gaming, a lot of it is about having good games. It's not about the tech and the fact that you right. can do it because all it takes is a bunch of good games to integrate the tech and all of a sudden it's a gigantic thing. Yeah. So there's like anti-NFT culture that is pushing it away, but that doesn't mean that it's not going to take off in some other form. So it, it's just a matter of like the games have to come out with it with it enabled <laughs> it's not that it, it can't be done so that's why i think it just takes a little bit of a couple first movers and all of a sudden people start flooding to it one example so i'm basically a bch maxi i'm told this daily by the wife <laughs> <laughs> not but, me <laughs> <laughs> um i'm very open-minded about cryptos though and yep. i researched them a ton and one i was really excited about was one called Ultra because of what they were making. And it, it was basically a Steam uh, clone, but fully crypto integrated. So when you bought a game, it was an NFT and you can trade it to people. And Ooh. the publishers that publish the games can tweak the dials and they get a cut of that secondary sale and they can configure that okay. cut. They can also turn that off if they want, it's up to them. But if they're turning mm -hmm. it off, they're just losing income. On top of that, like NFT items and stuff like that in the games that was all supported, um, doing tournaments in the games so that you can get coins or NFTs or whatever, all supported. Is it successful right now? No, like it's not popular, <laughs> but it does, it is out and it's released and you can actually use it right now, but parts of the system aren't running yet. So I see that as kind of an example of like NFT in gaming, it's just waiting for that right combination. And it's not hard to integrate all these things. Myself, as an amateur coder, was able to get my little farming ecosystem with Fog of War, which has NFTs and heroes, hero NFTs, which are our own NFT, but also other NFTs. So this was all in Smart PCH, where you had uh, gambling apes and uh, law punks and rat, crypto rats, as I think were three of them you could use those nfts in our farming system and it would get bonuses and stuff like that when i built the game you can also import those nfts into the game and they show up as in-game characters obviously not with the looks of the nfts because i never got that far into it but they show up as a character and you have to have the nft to actually have it show up and play in the game and all the armor and items and stuff like weapons can be used as well so it's like i'm an amateur coder and i got it working for myself in multiple projects very easily <laughs> so I just feel like it's like you just need that right combination. I, I hope you're right. E either way, we win. So yeah, please, yes, <laughs> either is fine. <laughs> I, I, I will be super happy if any killer app or successful project uh, is launched. Which will come first? Which will be bigger? I don't know. But uh, if it happens, either way, we win. So great. Let's do mm -hmm. it. Get coding. <laughs> yes. So currently in the cash tokens ecosystem, I'm not fully up to date on it, I think, but I have some stuff listed on helpme.cash under the cash tokens. So that would be a case of like, uh, and things that aren't on it, for example, are the guru NFTs and they're doing like a little price prediction thing coming up. There's tap swap uh, and fex.cash. 
and there's cauldron decks as well so those are like swapping and decentralized exchanges that are coming any other notable ones that you are willing and able to uh <laughs> to talk, talk about, about. <laughs> i know pitaka uh, has nfts uh, as well yes pitaka also has nfts um, I think those are all the big, big things going on. There's also, uh, what are they called? Uh, autists, NFTs. Uh, oh, the one per day ones? Or... Find... No, 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 no. Oh, that was somebody um, else. Uh, yeah, that was, that was John Moriarty. Oh, Emerald uh, Dow. No. Yeah, the, the yes. Oh, Emerald Dow. Is that what it's called? I think that was the first uh, one, basically... like the proof of concept. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, you could you could buy uh, one of these NFTs that's a smart contract, and your money is locked up. I think it's for a year. I'm not 100 percent sure. At the end of the the year, you can either you know keep your NFT, uh, or you can burn it and get your money back. You know, there's 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 no way to lose. Yeah, it is Emerald Dow. That's right. It's an interesting interesting idea. Uh, proof of concept. Will there be a secondary market for for these uh, NFTs that were, you know, the first, the first to launch? Uh, maybe I think number one already sold for seven BCH or something. I don't remember, but uh, <clears throat> maybe I'm confusing. Uh, so just to else, clarify, but... I think the unlock was each NFT was given 0.1 BCH, so you can get yes. 0.1 BCH once you burn it. So you can buy it yes. for seven BCH, but you're only going to get 0.1 at the end if you burn it. If yes, if if you burn it, but of course, if you, you can you can trade the NFT to someone else, right? You don't necessarily have to uh, destroy it. Interesting, interesting idea. Uh, I know that other projects are looking to uh, to move over and and port to uh, cash tokens as well. I think um, actually a number of them just announced it on Smart BCH. Yeah, Paytaka stuff is is moving over. Uh, I may or may not be moving something over to cash tokens as well. Yeah. I may or may not yeah. be moving something over to catch up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. Very I, I unfortunately. To... Sorry, go ahead. I was just going to say, I need to make sure I wrap my head around it and make it work. So, <laughs> yeah, I think, uh, I think your stuff is uh, exponentially more complicated than my stuff. So, yeah, I, 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 I agree with you. It, it really feels like ground floor. The highway's been built. Now let's see what towns pop up along the way and uh, what kind of race cars go racing down the highway. That's just so much potential. And of course, you know, when when uh, I remember when Bitcoin started, there wasn't, you know, huge amounts of money being thrown around. Everyone was really grassroots and it was really exciting to be to be involved in this grassroots project. And every every new merchant that came on board with, you know, alpaca socks or whatever. It was a cause to celebrate, you know, oh, I on, I onboarded this company or I onboarded this, this store. People were super happy and excited and we were all working towards the same thing. And it was, you know, such a, a fantastic feeling um, to be part of this thing. Somehow that, that got derailed, but on, on BCH it survived. And I think it's, you know, the one, one huge difference is the, the people that you see in BCH today, for the most part, are people who've who've stuck around through, you know, all of, all of these terrible events that have happened with the, the forks and the price crash and, and smart PCH, et cetera, as you know, people who are, are, are still around like you, you and me are, 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 are stubborn, right? Very. Uh, obviously the, you know, the price has, has been great this year. BCH has been one of the best performing cryptos this year, much better than BTC. So if you, you know, BCH was basically hovering around $100 for an entire year, basically between 90 and 100 and $110. And so if you, you know, got into BCH any time in the last year, then, you know, you've already doubled your money. It's hard to, hard to argue with that. But more importantly, I think, you know, if, if you talk to BCH developers and, and uh, developers of projects that are built on BCH, uh, a, a lot of us in the community are, are here for ideological and philosophical reasons. And we want our projects to succeed because we believe in uh, BCH as, as new money for the world. And so when we lo look at the, the price chart, and, oh, it's down 3%, <laughs> you know, that, that means nothing to me. It literally means nothing to me. Obviously, if it's down, you know, 95%, that is, is quite painful. But, but at the same time, it's like, I'm not going to stop working towards this goal because I think it's important for, for humanity. 
which sounds overly dramatic, but I really don't think it is. You know, the progress of, of humanity has been insane, even in our lifetimes. You know, I, I was born pre-internet. Uh, I was there when internet was new. I remember Windows 95 launch and how it, you know, changed everything. And, you know, I used to keep a notebook of things that I wanted to look up on the internet when I had a chance to get access again. And, and now I have this machine in my pocket that can answer any question I can imagine <laughs> at any time. And that's in, in my lifetime. And so thinking that, that money isn't also going to be revolutionized within our lifetime, um, I think is silly. And I think Bitcoin Cash is the way to do that. Totally so, agree. It is going to be very different world in another 15-ish years because that speed is picking up. Uh, yes. All the AI <laughs> stuff that's happening these days. Yeah. It is. I decided to get into coding. I'm not always sure about that these days. <laughs> With the way the AI coding stuff is going, it's like right now, it's like there's going to be a lot of jobs lost from that. Mm. Sure. There'll be new jobs, but, sure. But... <laughs> right, right. And but. there'll still be somebody needed to have the idea to create the thing. So even if you can say to the AI, create a game that has uh, horse racing and jousting together with machine guns, you know, it, it still takes somebody to create that, that concept and to refine it and whatever, even if you're using AI to make you know, it easier. It's like, uh, you know, it's like, uh, it's like the Iceman. I, 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 I come back to this very often, which is, you know, nobody cries that the Iceman is gone. You know, people used to have a, a box in their house that had a giant block of ice in it. And that's how you kept your food cold. And, uh, the Iceman would come around and deliver you a block of ice every week or whatever. And, and that's what you did. And then of course the refrigerator came out and, and the Iceman jobs all disappeared. You know, I'm sure there was a percentage of people who were very sad that uh, the Iceman jobs were gone. But generally speaking, people were much happier uh, because they had the refrigerator. Um, and that's progress of humanity right there. So, yeah, coding jobs may disappear, but uh, there's always going to be need for, for other things, especially in the emerging market of crypto and what can be done with it. You know, there's all kinds of things that we, we haven't even imagined yet, right, that will be common <laughs> soon we don't even we can't even imagine what it is but probably before you and i die it will be common <laughs> it's just like that blows my mind right yep uh, it's, it's that's the thing is it's gonna speed up and with ai stuff not being able to make a game because somebody has to come up with concept i think that's gonna happen i think the ais are gonna be able to do their own concepts and look at trends and will it be the same as a human doing certain things probably not but i think it's just gonna get better over time no it's, doubt the, just thinking about the things that'll happen in the future in our lifetimes, like taking a flight to Mars back and forth. You never know. With the way things are going, maybe. I, I don't want to fly. I want to teleport. So wake me up when we got oh, teleporters. Nice. That's uh, right. That's my jam right there. <laughs> so Amazon would be all over that. <laughs> yeah. Food delivery would be a lot better too. Get rid of tips. I want to over pizza. here at least. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah, that's you know not too, totally off topic, but I'm so glad Japan doesn't have tipping culture. That's uh, every time I go to a country that has tipping, I'm like, what are you guys doing? This is ridiculous. I know. I, I had to refuse a tip once when I was working at a, a little game or not game a, a tech store like Best Buy, and because yep. I would have been fired if I took it <laughs> <laughs> and then I there's lots of stories I know about mm. like paramedics and doctors and stuff people wanting to you know say thanks and do it monetarily and it's like they're not allowed to but at the, on the flip side it's like no but the delivery driver you have to tip them it's it just seems right weird. <laughs> right it's weird isn't it but yeah. at the same time I don't want my my the you know the the, auto, the self checkout food. Well, no, no, I don't want the, the self-checkout at the supermarket to ask for a tip, right? It's like, yes, yes, exactly. What? Take <laughs> like, I'm not even not even talking to a human, and I'm supposed to give a tip for what? Yeah, what am I tipping? Tip the grocery store for being a grocery store. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it doesn't, I mean, it doesn't make any sense to me at all. There was, there was one company uh, basically started their own, like, crypto-based tipping thing for Japan, and we all dogpiled onto their, their YouTube saying, like, this is a terrible idea, and, and uh, you guys should shut down. And I think they did because it's just like, <laughs> what, like, no, no tipping. We don't, not only do we not want tipping, but we definitely don't want a whole blockchain just for, for tipping. Mm, so, yes. Sounds very attractive. Yeah. Not at all. Like, wait, <laughs> why am I doing that? 
a um, random thing I'll quickly say, actually. Yep. Sure. Uh, since also since we're talking about gaming, so we got Baldur's Gate three recently. Yep. That the wife and I were gonna play co op, which we can't because it keeps crashing on us. Side rant. No, no. <laughs> Considering the AI talk as well, random observation, nothing to do with crypto really. I think Baldur's Gate three is probably gonna be like the last game that isn't heavily influenced by AI somehow, like the last oh. big successful game, because it's made such like. Do you know much about Baldur's Gate three? Um, I played Divinity 2, which I think is very similar. So. Yeah, same company made it. It's it's making big waves in the, the game envi- or, uh, news cycles right now because a lot of yeah. other developers are saying that they can't stand, match what they've done, mostly because they're all, oh, wow. they've all moved to like microtransactions for making income and stuff right. like that, whereas Baldur's yeah. Gate 3 hasn't done that. And Yet. Yeah, well, <laughs> uh, they're, they're pretty decent. But, yeah, probably not microtransactions. I don't know. I, just, I think it's going to be like, you know, you have the old games like GTA, not old games, but GTA 5 and then StarCraft, like these very big, popular, super successful like, name brand. Skyrim. Yeah, exactly. Mm. Yeah. Um, big games that have like leave big marks in gaming history. I feel like Baldur's Gate 3 is going to be that like one last mega hit before you mm. have AI, mm. like AI art, AI generation. So like in terms of D&D, since that's mm-hmm. what Baldur's Gate 3 yeah. is. AI dungeon masters or NPCs, because that's something mm-hmm. I started toying with slightly. So yep. That's going to be everywhere soon. So having a game that doesn't have an uh, NPCs that you can talk to dynamically and they respond with chat GPT style AIs, like that's going to be weird soon. <laughs> Say something else. Pretty much. That's Yeah, so that's where the gang gang, mmm, ice cream's so good is like retro already. (laughs) Because AIs aren't going to, NPCs aren't going to do that in the future. They're going to be like, oh, you want some ice cream? Sure. What flavors do you like? Oh, yeah, I also like uh, butter pecan, Rocky Road, whatever. Yeah, Uh, exactly. (laughs) Yeah. It's going to be a very, very different landscape in the future for the gaming. Do you know if uh, Starfield is incorporating AI or generative planets or anything? I haven't watched anything Starfield at all, except mm-hmm. something just recently saying that you can only walk so far from your ship when you land or something like that. Uh-huh. I think I think you can walk like 30 minutes in one direction and then there's an invisible wall, but you can like take your ship mm-hmm. and go somewhere else. And so it makes it so you can't get far away from your ship. But I don't know if they're using AI outside of just like standard procedural stuff. Yeah, I'm quite, uh, quite curious. I know like No Man's Sky, et cetera, is all procedural. I haven't played any of them because it seems like sort of pointless because it's like, you know, there's I no want to, uh, yeah, there's no end goal, um, which is why I don't like uh, MMORPGs. You know, I was a huge Fallout fan and then Fallout 76 came out and it's like, okay, so what's the point? It was like, well, you make a base and then you fight some people and then you launch a nuke and then it resets and you like, <sighs> No, I want. I want to. <laughs> oh, and there's no NPCs. And uh, <laughs> this, this is ah. if there's a, like a main quest and a story, and you follow along, but like the NPCs are you know random people that have you know actual personalities, and you know they can have conversations and stuff. That's great, but I still want a story, <laughs> right? I still want to go through you know the adventure that somebody's laid out. If if uh, you know, I have no problem if like swarms and NPCs and stuff are are uh, you know random and generated and and uh, have their own unique personalities and stuff. As long as there's still like the the story and and main characters that have tight rules around them, otherwise I, I, think... I might as well just dream. <laughs> I, I think it's going to go much <laughs> further than that, though. I think it's going to be like the NPCs you find in the game are created by the. AIs themselves and the stories that they like the storyline itself is created just in your instance in your your version of the game maybe you kill off an NPC or something and then it's going to take that into account and advance the story so it'll get to the point where um, if two people play the same Skyrim game just as an example they have vastly different experiences and they have like different cities in their games because events happen differently and the game just changed everything to accommodate that i think that's fantastic and exciting and fun but i really hope that there is still the art of storytelling to some degree 
maintained in some games as well. It's just like you could have a completely generated, you know, AI generated movie, but but at the end of the day, a good old fashioned story that has a beginning, mil- middle, and an end that everybody can share the same experience is good too. I, I hope there's room for both. Yeah, even just single player games are are uh, you know somewhat rare now. It's all online microtransaction, et cetera, et cetera. Real turnoff. And if any game developers are listening, the thing that bothers me the most, mini rant, is when you release like seven thousand different DLCs and then different bundles of DLCs. And then you also make an ultimate edition, but the ultimate edition doesn't include everything. And then you also release like the game of the year edition, but that doesn't include everything. And it's really unclear about what has everything and what has what. And I don't want to spend 20 minutes studying which D- DLC or in which pack, etc. I understand when the game is launched and and uh, you know you don't have everything and then DLC comes out, but after a couple of years, you should have you know the ultimate edition should be everything. Like nothing else is coming out. The game is finished. Here's everything. Buy it all in one pack. That's 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 what I want. So please. totally agree. And yeah. I, I, at the end of the day, they do it just because it makes money sense. They make more money that way. Which, you know, circling back around to the NFTs and other projects like Ultra and stuff like that that are trying to make it so, oh, you have all these DLC packs? If you don't want it, you can sell it. Make some money back. That would be quite nice. Do it. Do it. <laughs> Do it now. On BCH. Cash <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Develop it on Cash <clears throat> Yeah, I, uh, I really am excited and hopeful. Uh, I think the the community is is uh, really cohesive right now. There's not a lot of infighting. We had a quite a quite a large struggle, you know, with with alignment and uh, people trying to uh, change the project to be something that it isn't for their own personal idea about what BCH should be. And most of those people are are gone now. And I think we're in a really good position or I think we're in a really strong position. I think we're really aligned. Alignment is really important. You know, there's, there's still going to be, uh, you know, room for everyone uh, that wants to participate. If, if uh, you know, you want to be passive and, and just uh, buy BCH and use BCH, uh, you don't need to listen to us. You don't need to join any of the groups. You don't need to talk. Just use it. It's money. It's just money. But if you do want to participate in the project, you're you know completely welcome to as well. Most people are quite friendly. If you have an idea, there's people who will help you get it off the ground, assuming that it's not ridiculous. <laughs> uh, I'm going to make a spaceship that runs on BCH. Well, maybe. <laughs> but <laughs> Is this a game? No, no, no. A real spaceship. Okay. Send a transaction to ignite Send the a transaction. <laughs> yeah, ignite the engine. Do you have a spaceship? No, but that'll come later. Uh, okay. <laughs> minor details. Uh, minor, 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 minor details. Uh, yeah, ideas are, are a dime a dozen. People will support you if you if you have an idea that's actionable, which goes back to the whole someone's thing, right? So, uh, you know, even even yesterday, someone someone uh, in one of the chat groups said like. Uh, how come how come these cam sites aren't using bch someone should should get on that it's like, well who are you talking to <laughs> right uh, who, who who is who is the someone that should should uh, be emailing cam sites to get them onto bch is is that is that your job is that my job is that is that his job is that her job whose job is it it's nobody's job it's everybody's job if uh, if that's something that you think is really important and and you frequent whatever cam site, just email them and say, hey, I'd like to pay you in BCH. You know, very often if I'm buying something online, I'll I'll you know just message the 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 owner of the store, especially if it's like a small small shop, like a guy who does like some custom uh, thing for a music instrument or something. I'll be like, hey, I I really want to buy your whatever. Do you accept BCH? And and they'll be like, what's BCH? You know, you ask. Often they'll say no, but sometimes they'll say yes, and then you've got a new community member. So uh, 
all, all it takes is a little bit of effort. And if enough people do it, you know, if enough people ask a company to accept BCH, they'll, they'll, they'll do it. So you can do your part, you know, if, if you want BCH to succeed, uh, help. And you don't have to have any kind of special skills, right? You, you buy stuff. So when you buy stuff, ask them if, if they'll accept a BCH. Uh, you make money. Uh, ask whoever pays you to pay you in BCH. It's you know it's it's the little things. Probably most often you'll hear a no, but sometimes you'll hear a yes, and then over time those yeses will build up, and and it'll be much easier to get yeses. Again, if you if you know how to uh, create memes, make BCH memes. If if uh, you know how to talk, get a camera and start talking about BCH. Upload it to YouTube. Upload it to TikTok. I think I'm one of the very few people that makes regular BCH content on on TikTok. So if, you know, it's, it's not hard to put, put some GIFs and the music together, uh, just upload them, right? Just get, get the word out there. You can help too, and, and we need your help. So uh, please participate. Someone That's is my appeal. you. Someone is you, right? Yeah. Uh, you know, bo- both you and I, when we got into Bitcoin, we both had the same thought. Like, I'm nobody. Yeah. You know, I can't do anything. Um, and then here we are both doing stuff. You know, it's not like, you know, my first real foray, I guess, was starting the Osaka meetup, right? And, and you know, I don't have any experience setting up a meetup or or getting getting strangers together in, in a place and onboarding a, a restaurant or whatever. But you, you, it's not that hard, right? You just you just try. And if, if you fail, so what? You tried, right? You you uh, you fail at 100 percent of the things you don't try. So just just try participate, you know, participate, join the conversation if you want to. Right. You don't have to. But uh, I'm sometimes I encounter people online who are like, oh, yeah, I wish I could help. Well, you can. Uh, There's there's uh, an infinite number of things you could do to help. And you don't need to put in, you know, 20 hours a week. You, You can put in five minutes a week if you really want to. And and, you know, one really simple thing that you can do is whenever you see BCH content that you like on Twitter or on Reddit or whatever, like it. It's not hard. <laughs> you know, just yep. hit the like button <laughs> every single time. Uh, you don't even need to retweet it or re-exit or whatever it's called. You don't need to share it. I mean, uh, you you can. That helps too. But every time you see something that says BCH that you think is not ridiculous, give it a like. It helps. Yeah, please please participate uh, as much as you can. I'll say that I I did some casual BCH podcasts before with the wife because uh, we just wanted to yep. do something more get involved. And I, we enjoyed doing them. It's just kind of life circumstances. Couldn't really dedicate time to it. And a couple people put comments on those videos. Like they, they didn't get many views. That's kind of what we expected. But some people yep. did watch it. And a couple of people commented and said, like, we love this. And even though they're not like amazingly made videos or anything. And it's just us kind of having a random conversation. And like those comments, I remember those comments. And it's like, that, that's part of the reason I even decided to start doing this again was some people found it useful. Uh, some yep. people liked it. And like just doing lights and stuff like that, they do have a little bit of an impact. If it's like a big corporation thing something or something, probably won't have an impact. But when it's the smaller things, definitely does. I, and, I agree 100%. Uh, yep. the, every, every, every little bit of encouragement helps, right? If, if, if somebody's making content and nobody interacts with it, eventually they'll probably stop doing it. Uh, so please interact with with the content you see that you enjoy. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, you know we don't we don't get paid for these things. We're doing it because we love BCH, um, and so your encouragement uh, has a massive effect. Uh, and I appreciate it. every everyone who's who 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 likes the news and shares the news and and likes the you know stupid memes that I create and whatever. Thank you. It, uh, uh, really helps uh, keep motivation going, um, and so you can help too by just liking the stuff that people people create. And for people getting involved, I would just reiterate the uh, "don't be afraid about to fail." Failure is fine. Failure is yep. normal. I we actually tried to run a BCH meetup as well in the past, and it totally bombed, which was mostly because <laughs> we were in like a very small community, and people showed interest, but they didn't go that extra step to like actually show up type thing so uh, but that's right. fine it's you you do what you can and if you fail you just move on and do your next thing so yep can't hurt to try so why not 
And and also, uh, if if you happen to be a whale, and and you think, you know, oh, I wish I could I could do more with my BCH to help the value go up, right? You know, if you look at the the top hundred BCH addresses, there's there's people who have massive amounts of money on BCH. You know, if you if you think you don't have the skill, but you want to see your investment uh, improve, then take a small percentage of your investment and put it towards people who are doing stuff in the space. Uh, I'm not going to, I'm not going to say, you know, give all of your money to me. You're welcome to, but, uh, uh, <laughs> you know, there's, 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 uh, an untold number of projects and people who are, are working really hard, uh, all day, every day, often for free to help BCH. Uh, and that also means helping your investment. So if you are a whale and you're sitting on the sidelines, you know, uh, that 1% maybe doesn't mean much to you. But for someone who is a creator in 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 Lebanon or Bangladesh or, or whatever, you know, a uh, hundred dollars is life changing money for them. And uh, if if someone is is doing something that you think really is helping push BCH forward, feel free to support them even more if if you are able to, because you know we're for the most part we're volunteers, and so you know every every little bit of help that we can get and support that we can get means that we can spend more time amplifying our efforts because we don't need to work other jobs. Uh, we don't need to eat instant ramen for dinner or bread. Uh, you know, I don't want to be racist. It depends what country you're in. <laughs> <laughs> you know, white bread is good, but you know, instant ramen is nice too. Everybody can help in some way if, if you, if you're motivated to, uh, and if you if you want your investment to to go up, then you can help as you can help yourself by helping us. So please uh, help any way you can like, share, subscribe, upvote and donate. Those are what you things that you can do if, if you're not able to create something on your own. Just to reiterate, yeah, BCH is actually in a really weird position because it, a lot of its competitors are funded or pushed by some like central entity like most of right. them being companies and so they have a pool of money to pull from whereas bch is fully decentralized there's nobody at the top of it it's like coin market cap being an example of oh they need information about a coin oh, let's go to this company because it's their coin and so we go to them they're the authority bch doesn't have that and you the bch foundation ended up being that for bch on coin market cap and uh, I, you told me in the past that they like asked you for questions about like vetting because they were looking for somebody to like be that central authority bch unavoidably or un unquestionably has fallen behind compared to a lot of these other chains in terms of like marketing and stuff like that because it doesn't have this organized pool of money pushing itself forward it's just random people volunteering their time and lots of separate ecosystems doing their own thing and it's just like very loosely <laughs> going in the same direction right uh, and i that's that's exactly why I, I started you know the bchf uh is because there are there are these sort of communication issues and and points of contact and who do i talk to and, and where do i go uh etc uh you know i have i have you know i want to i want to say this very clearly i have no desire to be you know, the, the central anything in BCH. I have no desire to be, you know, the arbiter of, of information uh, for what goes on websites, et cetera. But at the same time, you know, companies like uh, CoinMarketCap and others, you know, they want uh, somebody, cause they, you know, they're, they're traditional in some way. Uh, they, they have their own system. Uh, you know, you email someone that has the domain that links to the project, right? Uh, yeah. And even going through setting up the the, the Bitcoin Cash page for Coin Market Cap, um, you know, there's there's the, you know there's the contact person and and you know founders, blah 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 blah. And so for a decentralized system like that doesn't really work. But somebody somebody needs to to be in contact with these people. So who 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 do you put in contact with? coin market cap and and uh, these other you know coin coin whatever systems right uh like defi llama for example i'm not in contact uh, with them i think uh, bch autist is 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 really doing doing that 
uh, getting any hedge stuff on, on DeFi Llama. But, you know, they need a contact. They need somebody they can talk to. And so, well, someone has to contact these people and someone has to be in contact with these people and someone has to uh, make sure that they have their information and their nodes get updated uh, well in advance and, you know, all of these things. And there's there's without without a central authority, without... Uh, you know the the founders fund the founders war chest for promotion etc um, these are all things that have to be done by by individuals who who want it to get done and uh, you know bch.info uh, bch.org uh, you know these are our our websites that are done by by people who want bch to succeed uh, they're not sponsored or funded or you know etc bchf as well uh, we just want the project to succeed. So, yeah, I'm gonna, I'm, I'm doing as much as I can uh, to make sure that BCH is well represented. Uh, I started talking to conference organizers to see if, because one thing that I think has really been missing is is presence uh, of BCH at at these conferences, right? And why doesn't BCH have a have a table at whatever conference, like? A couple of years ago, maybe it's because projects were or, or organizers were actively anti BCH. But today, I don't think that that matters so much. The, the reason why BCH isn't represented at, at whatever conference is because we haven't made any effort to do it. <laughs> Pretty much. Yeah. Um, and if, yeah. And if and if nobody and, and, and understandably, like uh, if you were a wallet maker, you're not thinking like, oh, I'm going to go and talk about BCH at some conference. You're thinking, I'm going to make my wallet. You know, these are all all things that uh, that you know some group uh, has to has to decide that it's important for them. And so that's that's it's. I think it's important. So I'm I'm doing it. Any anyone who's willing to uh, to help me do stuff, uh, I would love to have your help. Uh, there's an infinite number of things that can be done. And uh, any any volunteers would be wonderful. Feel free to uh, contact me if you want to help. Um, there's lots to do. You think something is important, then you can do it yourself or convince me and, and uh, maybe I'll, I'll work on it. Yeah, all hands on deck. We need more blood. So. We always need more. <laughs> yes. um, Figuratively. Uh, uh, figure- <laughs> more blood for the blood throne. <laughs> <laughs> yes. I, 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 I'm pretty sure I'm at capacity for blood, so <laughs> I don't, I don't, I don't literally need your blood. Yeah. Or do we? <laughs> uh, one thing that really excited me about cash tokens uh, is so this whole vein of thought about like there being a central entity to push forward everything yep. in other chains. BCH people are kind of resistant to that a little bit, obviously for very good reasons. But I think that having some sort of DAO style thing almost like what BCHF is trying to do or taking up all the loose ends nobody wants to do, doing marketing yep. and stuff like that. Like that's something that would be would be super beneficial to Bitcoin Cash. Uh, a lot of other chains have these already. They have DAOs because it's all EVM and that's fairly trivial to do. But I think with Cash Tokens, we can now get those DAOs created uh, soon-ish maybe. And all of a sudden, <laughs> we're going to have some more say in as a community and it gets more funding to going to certain things so i think it's coming oh that's that, that's well yeah. someone should build that <laughs> someone should build that yeah I, I wrote a little article called bch do on read.cash which is basically saying we need yeah. to make a dao and that's something i do want to do and um, i would have done on smart bch if it hadn't blown up because i i'm fully confident i could have created that there so I do want to look into that on cash tokens at some point, but limited bandwidth. <laughs> right. Check out check out the document in the link below. Yeah, link below. Right. Maybe, maybe, <laughs> maybe, maybe. Depending on where you're listening to this, uh, yes. there may be a link below uh, to the read.cash article. But but uh, uh, if if not, just go to read.cash and search for uh, bch.do. Bch.do. Check that out. Yep. Uh, or search for say, Sayoshi Nakamario, uh, or you could look up "Help Me Cash" on YouTube, and it'll this video will be in there with the links. Do you want to uh, do you want to talk about uh, how that would work a little bit? Yeah, BCH do. So my my high level uh, thought about it was that so basically you take Flipstarter and you just ramp it up to eleven and give it steroids, <laughs> and people donate money into the DAO, and it kind of gets locked in. 
uh, was my initial thought. So you can't take it out. So it's like a full-fledged donation to the DAO. But you have control over where that money gets donated still. So you can choose which projects uh, it goes to. And it's almost like a flip starter at that point where you assign the money to a project. And then it's a typical, they get the money, they can withdraw certain amounts of it based off their goals uh, that they reach or whatever. Um, but there's a procedure for people to pull money away from the, the project if they go rogue, basically. Um, but the money has to stay in the DAO still, so they could just assign it to a different project. That's one part of it. What the if second, they're no good project? Then you just sit there with the money, and it's just waiting for a project to show up. <laughs> <laughs> I see. The, the other side of it is trying to get the rest of the ecosystem invested into the DAO, not in a financial right. sense necessarily, but in a uh, economic sense. So mm. I'll just smart. I'll talk smart PCH just because that's in my mind. Original, that's what yeah. kind of was originally yeah. for. So Mist Swap was one of the big dexes on smart PCH. So they could have um, had some sort of incentive tied to being part of the DAO with your account. So maybe you get a small uh, bonus on trading fees or something like that. You pay a little bit less, and it could be an incentive to donate to the ecosystem. Some DEXs might not do that. It depends on a lot of other stuff. Uh, but you could make it so that it, it makes financial sense for these other services to actually uh, want to provide a small little benefit to the DAO. And I see. So it, it just just to make sure I understand. So, like, for example, uh, it's, it's like the common good fund. So if you donate money to the DAO, you get an NFT. And if you have that NFT in your wallet, then... X service provider will give you a discount whenever you use their service. So pretty much, it's like being yeah, a membership okay. card almost. Right. And and so a Dex, like if if this ecosystem actually got built, a Dex, say a new Dex came along onto the chain, and you know they would want to try and draw that this big pool of users. So they might offer incentive to them to try and get them to come over. It's almost like a marketing aspect of trying to like kickstart your project almost. And some other projects have things that don't cost them money. So a DEX might be a little harder to, to work that out with because they're literally giving fees away. But in terms right. of like games, like Fog of War, we could have given away NFTs and stuff like that. And it doesn't cost us anything. So it's like a very minor, well, depending on the project, it could uh, make the market a little more saturated because there's more NFTs. But in our case, we had a massive amount of burning of NFTs going on. Uh, for the weapons and armors and stuff that you can get from it. So in our case, it didn't really matter. We would, as a project owner, I would have been totally happy throwing a bone to this uh, decentralized DAO just to encourage funding. So that's, that's kind of like the other side of it is trying to gamify it a little bit so that people want to be part of it and have like mm. these little bragging rights, badges, NFT stuff that might give rewards and stuff like that. So basically try to encourage game of five flip starter and make an incentive to use it that makes sense to me as far as like donating money to the dow because you want to get the the benefits right maybe you can you can explain it to me but like i remember i think it was before bch launched there was a there was a the first sort of pos system uh i learned about which was called like arc i think like arc chain maybe <laughs> that's a chain um, <laughs> i don't know about a pos system. yeah Okay, but but uh, at at the time, like you, I'm pretty sure it was POS, and I maybe it wasn't called POS at the time. Basically, how it worked was, you know, you buy some coins, and then you stake your coins uh, with whatever person, and there's like a bunch of different people you can stake your coins with, and then if you agree with what they are proposing, then you get they get the they get the like mining rewards and then they distribute them amongst all the people that put their coins in that person's pool and you know i, I the idea was basically like I, I could be totally off again this is like i don't know eight years ago or something correct me in the comments below um <laughs> But what what I think how it worked was like, that was how governance was supposed to work. Like you put your coins in this guy's pool and then his voice has more weight. And then not only does uh, he have like the more voting rights, but he also gets the mining reward uh, and then distributes those amongst all the people that put their their 
voice in his pool, right? Um, and so in the case of, of your DAO, uh, I really want to get the fire sword NFT. And so I put money in the DAO that gives me the fire sword NFT, but that's it. I got my NFT. I'm not voting for anything as far as like what projects get funding and stuff. So how, how do you make sure that people not only put money in the DAO, but also, uh, use actually it participate. Like, uh, actually participate. Yeah. Yeah. That that's actually something we thought about and put in it was that the, you ha you have to be an active participant basically. So I, I think the way that I wrote the article said that, uh, there's basically a time limit and, uh, uh, right. Yeah. There's like two, two sets you put coins in and there's two states for it. Either they're you, you have control of them or you've forfeited them. I think I said, I and once you hit that time limit, it starts forfeiting your coins. So part of them start, uh, a percentage of them start getting distributed to other people that are in the DAO, but they're still oh. locked to the DAO. So they can't take them out. That Money was a stays way in the ecosystem. Yeah. You that just was, don't get a vote with it anymore. <laughs> exactly. It, it was literally a way to try and lock funds to the DAO and try to encourage the coins to eventually be spent. And doing right. this opened up all this other stuff about like, if you allow the DAO users to pull back funds from the projects because they are not delivering or they're going rogue, whatever, you could uh, have the situation where if you allow the people to ever pull out money, so I think the paper says you can't, but like it's an option you could have, but if you allow them to pull out money, that opens up these things well, like, oh, they'll just do a fake proposal and try to get it funded and then they'll try to pull money out that right. way. Um, so there's all these little right. attacks you have to think about in terms of what levers do you set up to have with this DAO and which ways can you break it? And well, I think that's why he's going to try and gain it. Pretty much, yeah, it, get it's, money a, <laughs> it's, it's a puzzle that you have to think about from an adversarial view. Yeah. <laughs> so that, that's why it's like money stays in the DAO and you try to incentivize usage by forfeiting coins over time. I mean, what if somebody, you know, dies, those coins are just going to sit there forever. Yep. So you need, yep. it would be better for those coins to disperse and then get funded to a project or something. So yeah, Goons no, it never die. Yeah. <laughs> it's a whole thing. This is like a nightly topic for me. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm glad I'm not married to you. Actually, no, maybe I wish I was married to you. That would Ooh. be amazing. <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> yeah. So this is, uh, basically I'll say like, you know, and then she'll turn to me and be like, oh, okay, here we go. We're going to go. Oh, God, here we go. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hold on. Let me put some tea on. <laughs> yeah. Let me put the earplugs in. I don't I think a DAO is going to be a super important thing that will come out at some point, And it's, it's going to be opt-in. So if you don't like it, that's fine. You just don't have to use it. Like, like most things, you know, BCH is, is voluntary. So if you, if you want to participate in something, you can. If you don't want to, you don't have to. Uh, and nobody can force you to do anything. And that also means that uh, nobody has to listen to you if they don't want to. Uh, you, you're, you're able to say uh, anything anywhere you want to, but that doesn't automatically give you a seat at my table. Uh, you have your own table and you can invite anybody you want to to your table, but uh, you don't get a seat at my table. That's that's a great, great thing about this whole thing is, is uh, the best ideas will percolate to the top. You know, it, I think a, a perfect example is cash tokens, right? So, you know, cash tokens was was two different uh, ideas. One one um, uh, by Jason Dreisner and and uh, one by Andrew Stone, and there were sort of competing ideas. And then uh, Bitcoin Cash Autist and Jason Dreisner started working together, and they really combined the two and made a super better proposal than than either independent ones. And that's what cash tokens is now. Even even if you have this idea and you put it out there and you don't want to drive it, somebody else might, if it's an amazing idea, if, if somebody really sees the potential in it uh, and you're willing to, to, to give up your, your, your idea, uh, somebody may run with it, but don't count on that because we're all busy. So the best person to run with your idea, to drive your idea is you. Uh, and that's really what uh, Chip is all about as well. Uh, you know, if you have a proposal to make, uh, so in case people are not aware, Bitcoin Cash upgrades through an emergent consensus pro, uh, uh, protocol. What's the word I'm looking for? Protocol. Not uh, quite uh, close. Uh, <laughs> not quite. Not, yeah, emergent consensus system. Uh, 
And and so anybody that wants to can create a proposal. And so feel free to go to uh, BitcoinCashResearch.org, and there's there's links uh, on how to uh, create uh, a chip there. But basically, the idea is I have this idea. I think it's important for for BCH. And these ideas don't necessarily have to be consensus changing ideas. They can be about anything. Uh, it's just about getting people to uh, to agree on it. So. You know, if if uh, you think Bitcoin Cash uh, official color should be hash zero zero f three f two, because you think it's the I don't know if that's actually green, but if you think that's the nicest <laughs> shade of green, uh, and you want everybody to get on board and change your change their branding to to reflect that, then you could create a chip and and get people to agree or disagree on it. Uh, and likewise, with with uh, consensus changes, it's the same thing. So you create a document, but you really have to drive it. So you have to be the person who, uh, you know, you can't just have this idea and be like, I want Bitcoin Cash to do this and then put it out there and then just leave it like that's nothing's going to happen. You have to drive it or you have to find someone or pay someone to drive it. And that that requires talking to stakeholders and getting them to agree and listening to their opinions and gathering their information and presenting it. It's a lot of work. Uh, but if you really think it's going to help BCH or it's important for you and your business, et cetera, that's just what you got to do. But unlike BTC, there is there is uh, a method to getting your change in uh, the project. So uh, please consider that as well. I don't remember why I'm talking about this now, but uh, uh, <laughs> it's letting people know. Yeah, it's all voluntary. It's all voluntary. <laughs> yeah, letting people know. That's that's how it works. The uh, yeah. Bitcoin Cash logo is actually kind of interesting. Just popped into my head when he said that because there's kind of like yeah. four versions of it out in the wild right now. There's like the standard, like Coin Market well, standard, but Coin Market Cap, like the light greenish, <laughs> whatever it is, yep. circle. But there's also the dark green originally. There was uh, like a lime green yep. that is still out there and there's also yep. the wings <laughs> that you still yep. see every now and then so it's like that's kind of a good example of showing that bch is chaotically decentralized because other projects don't really have that they're all one logo yeah yeah there's no there's no standard bch logo i even myself um i i i sometimes like the the sort of minty green and i sometimes like the the more more limey green one uh, and I use both uh, for different things, and and uh, I don't think it it matters so much as long as they're green. You know, if you <laughs> if you start doing purple or something, then people are gonna maybe think it's a different project. But uh, yeah, and if it's your own project, like Electron Cash uses a blue uh, BCH logo, which is fine because it's their thing. Um, but if you're representing BCH, uh, you know, I think green is is the uh, best way to get recognition and understanding of, of what the project is just like you know some people prefer to use a different name uh just bch versus bitcoin cash bitcoin cash is two words you know there's there's different ways to uh, to write the name as well but uh, i think generally people are on the same page uh, and there is no official color there's no official logo there's no official way to write it um, it's just what what has emerged from from the community as far as what is standard and what people use. If I create a new project, uh, it's some amazing game. It's uh, Skyrim Two that I made all by myself using mods, and it's connected to the blockchain. And every item is an NFT. But on my on in my game, BCH is represented by a gray logo. Then it could very well be possible that it takes over and just becomes the common one used by everyone. Yeah. Uh, BCH was was you know orange uh, predominantly uh, at the start, and I have a whole box full of with the wings. I have a whole box full of those stickers. So if you want some, let me know because they're <laughs> they're a collector's item now. Uh, yeah, I've got a bunch of orange orange BCH goods. People gravitated towards green. Um, and I did too. I thought that once I started seeing green stuff, I just immediately switched to green. Uh, I think it's much better. So, but that doesn't mean it's going to be green forever, and it doesn't mean that the shade that I like is 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 the be all end all. So, that's decentralization for you. Can't even agree on a logo. Um, <laughs> it uh, doesn't. But it doesn't matter, right? It, yeah. Uh, it's a perfect it's, example. Uh, it's, yep. Perfect example. So, but if you, you know, if you ask, well, what is, what is the BTC logo? 
a particular shade of orange in a particular way in the Ubuntu font. The, it's really been, a, you know, in my in my private life, I guess I should say, you know, there was never anything like this, you know, decentralization, you know, emergent behavior and consensus is all like, you know, society is quite rigid in, in how it does stuff. Of course, you know, trends are emergent, but a lot of things are, are decided by marketing, right? Everybody switches to some style of clothes because it was marketed successfully by some company. You know, Bitcoin traditionally wasn't like that. It wasn't marketed by these big things. It was a bunch of people who were like, this project's awesome and I want it to succeed and I'm going to push it to succeed. You know, then tethers and institutional money and, and all of these different things started happening. But uh, for the most part, BCH is still very much that grassroots, emergent, decentralized system, much more so than 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 any of the other major top 20 uh, projects. As far as I know, I haven't looked into all of them in detail, but, uh, you know, BTC often. now has, uh, they change often. Uh, BTC has, has, has block stream really pushing things in a lot of the way. Uh, of course, Ethereum had the foundation when they set up whatever Vitalik wanted basically happened. And I forget the name of the labs, but whatever labs was, uh, you know, funding things on Ethereum, all kinds of projects that needed money just asked, hey, I'm building this thing on Ethereum. Can I get some money? And they're like, sure, here is some Ethereum, uh, which is fantastic. And I wish I had the ability to do that. I wish I had uh, a big pile of money. And if I did have a big pile of money, that's exactly what I would do. People wanted to build stuff on BCH. I would, of course, vet them first and then put money into them. But we don't have that. We've got to. We got to be a bit more scrappier. Our bite. Our our belts are a, li a little bit tighter. But we're still. We're still doing it. We're making it ha happen because the people that are dedicated to making it happen are, are making it happen. Mm -hmm. Even though uh, we don't. We don't have the war chest. We're still making amazing progress. There's lots of work to be done, but we're 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 doing it. And you can help. So please do. I don't mean Small. you. I mean Roy. <laughs> oh no! But, no, but, no, but okay. you too. So. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm out. Bye. Yeah, Talk to you, Sayoshi. We're counting on you. We're counting on you. You got to make the killer app. Everyone's waiting on you. Come on. Yeah. I am Bitcoin. I'm not nervous. I'm the tech that changes what society is. I am money. I create freedom. And I'm limited, so I know what my worth is. I don't ask how high the fee is. I don't know. Been verifiable blockchain. Cashes and transactions. I find them. I process them. I verify what I'm handed. I trust with commanding. Under the surface, I feel berserk like a keyboard warrior that's suddenly wordless. Under the surface, what's a Toshi ever like? Yo, I don't want to fight big banks. Under the surface, I'm pretty sure I'm worthless if I can't be of service. A bug or a hack, a line in the stack that brings the camels back. What brings the camels back? It's both of the fees, fees, fees that'll never stop. Whoa. Users that'll leave, leave, leave till we just go. Satoshi blockchain is stronger See the users throw away the dollar Who am I if I can't verify it at all? If I falter Under the surface I had my nerves and it worsens I worry a central chain will hurt us Under the surface The miners will leave They need fees Lighting will kill this Under the surface I think about the white paper Can we somehow preserve it? Line up Lexis, yo Electronic gold blow Who can try to stop a town below? Would that free some room up for more developmentation or simple uses? Instead, we measure this growing blockchain. Keeps growing, keep going, cause all we see is rising of the fees, fees, fees that'll never stop. Whoa, users that'll leave. Just go pop!
mistakes Just ease that alone, low, 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 and sustainable